Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete. Welcome back to Studio G. The weather is beautiful here in Illinois. Finally, spring is here. And uh, I have a major confession to make to you. And yes, I went to another auction. I did not film it. It was a terrible auction. I did manage to buy a few worthless things that I did not need. So, let me explain all that. Well, first of all, I bought this extra long Kennedy box. It's totally empty. I did not need it, but I just could not refuse it. So after I bought it, it was on the ground in a driveway. I got down on my knees to lock it up so I could carry it to the car. It's quite heavy. And a man tapped me on the shoulder and he said, this belonged to my mother. She was the very first foreman at Sunstrand Transmissions. And she had worked there many years. And uh, he just wanted to let me know where the box came from, so I thought that was interesting. Most of you know that I love cutaways of whatever product it might be or whatever piece of machinery. And about five years ago, I made this cutaway of a Model A, Ford Model A transmission. There are four videos on that, and I'll put links in the description, at least to the first one, if anyone missed those. And uh, I think I'm going to donate this to the Volo Car Museum if they can use it. But why am I telling you about this old transmission here? Well, when I went to the auction, of all things, there was this gearbox. And I had to have it, and I, had, I paid a little more than what I would have wanted to pay. I didn't think anyone would want it. Now I had no chance to examine it other than to, from a distance because it was in the middle of a hay rack. I think I got a picture of that, I'll flash. And it was a little too heavy for me to try to lift out and figure out what it was. So I bought it almost sight unseen and I thought that it was a transmission uh, cutaway or, you know, homemade, or a, uh, a teaching aid is what I thought it was, but it doesn't appear to be that. So if anyone can help me on this, I'm going to rotate it here in a minute and show you what it does or what it doesn't do. It's uh, all plexiglass, as you can see, from the other side. Kind of interesting, but it is not just a regular transmission like this Ford transmission. All of the gears appear to be machine cut and very nicely done. They're not molded out of thick plexiglass. And these two pieces were laying loose in here when I took possession of the item. But I do not know where they're supposed to go. This hole is too large to go up here. Of course, in a minute you'll see why that wouldn't go on there anyway. And it's too small to go onto either one of these approximately inch and a half diameter plastic rods. Same with this. It doesn't really fit anything. So I, I can't figure it out. Maybe these have nothing to do with it. At first I thought this large piece of plastic here on the top, I have it laying on its side now, was solid, but it's not. So if you look in there, you can see the shifting fork fastened onto this rod. So the case, or the carcass, is made of half-inch clear plexiglass, and, you know, there's $200 worth of plexiglass in here. You know, that's a ex very, very expensive product. So, is this a teaching aid? I don't know. I did find one little tag on it. Let me show that to you. So there's a partial tag right here that says, Property of, and I can't make, it's... It's missing the bottom. I don't know why, but it looks like the word dental is on here. But, it, you know, what could this possibly have to do with dental work? Well, I guess maybe it does. The gears have teeth. The top shaft has a cluster gear, so all of these gears are, on, are together, really, as you can see. And they're held on with set screws. It appears that the bottom shaft here is the driven shaft. 
So you can see what it does to the gears on the top. And shift it like that. I really don't know what I'm doing here. Can anyone help me? What is this thing? Or should it go directly to waste management next Thursday? Well, that auction was a pouting disappointment. Came back with two pieces of junk that I have no use for, unless you can tell me what this thing is. Whoever made it did a pretty good job, but I, I see some dimensions right here written in pencil. And again, it appears to be unfinished. Some of the plastic broke out here, so it's not perfect by any means, and it was pretty dirty. Well, the only redeeming thing about that auction was that two blocks from where the auction actually was held was a little restaurant called Smitty's, and they served the world's biggest pork tenderloin, not enough for four people. So my wife and I split one and still brought a bunch of it home. I think I got a picture of that. If I do, I'll flash it on the screen right now. Well, that's really all I've got for you, other than I want to talk about the colors of Wilton Vices. So stick with me. I need your advice, and that can be put in the comment, comments as well. Now, do not send a comment on the Wilton Vice colors after June 15th, 2024. I will not see it, and the job will have been done. So let's move over to the other bench. Most of the civilized world knows that I bought this Wilton baby bullet vise very recently. And the bullet vise has two inch jaws. This Wilton has three inch jaws and the larger one on the bottom has four inch jaws. So I plan on doing a video, a mild restoration, a superficial Peterson restoration of this but I would like to get the correct original Wilton color. Now, this vice was made in the 60s. Although, notice it still says Chicago on it, not Schiller Park. And I'm not sure when they made that move. Do you remember a couple of years ago when I restored this 4-inch Wilton vice and I used Rust-Oleum Verde Green, which was recommended by Keith Rucker, and it is a nice color, but it isn't even close to that. I mean, not even close. Well, three or four years ago, I redid this little Wilton vise. By the way, it has a swivel base. I really don't like swivel bases. I know most people do, but I don't care for them. But anyway, this is painted just the standard Rust-Oleum machinery gray, the same color that many new cars are being painted. It's a very popular color now on just about every brand of car, and I, most of them, I think, were Navy surplus, and because you can faintly see on the door where it said, property of the U.S. Navy for official use only. Did you hear my grandson... <laughs> Start up that uh, that Kawasaki. So now I have a grandson that is a spite motorcyclist. Anyway, can anybody match this color? I think we've talked about this before. It's nowhere close to the Rust Oleum color. And I've been to all the stores, and you can't. Obviously, it's a custom color. Something like South Bend used. Well, it's not the same as South Bend but there are apparently a thousand shades of gray. So let me know what paint can I use that will be exactly like this. I like to keep things authentic and I will not paint the uh, lettering here because that's not authentic. Some people like to do that and that's up to them, but I would prefer it to look like this. Or should I just clean this up, get the rust off it and not paint it because original condition is pretty neat too. So again, put that in the comments, but not after June 15th, 2024. All right, this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. See you next time.